What I can say is that my MBA gave me the confidence to walk into any room, even when we, we have talked to people about raising money. So I've walked into rooms with VCs, complete confidence. And I think that only comes with the top MBA. What's the value of an MBA? At Menlo Coaching, we're very cynical. And we think that the value of an MBA should be measured in terms of the financial return that you get, what it costs you, and your future career success. It's just much too expensive as an experience to do for personal enrichment. But having said that, many MBA students dramatically underestimate the financial value of the MBA degree because they look only at the first job after they graduate. So the first thing when looking at the value of an MBA is to look at the cost. Almost all top two-year programs. The hard costs of the program, tuition is often around $150,000 for the two years. Living expenses vary a bit depending on the location. Call it another $50,000, $60,000. There's always extras on top of this. You don't want to be the one student who skips the skiing trip. You don't want to be the one student who does no international exchange program. So it's going to add up a little bit more. You're going to call it 250000 give or take. Then, of course, you're giving up a lot of compensation during the not quite two years that you'll be out of the workforce. And this costs more for some of you than others. So depending on how much you make, the cost could be a little bit below or a little bit above half a million dollars. Depends on whether you're one of these high-paid finance professionals or not. So you need a very high return on that. The first kind of line of defense, looking at the financial return, for some of you, this will make it an easy decision. Look at your current compensation and then read the post-MBA placements in the employment reports and compare the two. There are some people where you will make such a big jump in your compensation pre- and post-MBA, it's going to pay for itself very rapidly. For example, one person who I worked with last year, he was in a tech product management job, working for a bit of a smaller company, was making $90,000 per year, plus some stock options that honestly, we both knew were going to be worthless. The company was not on track for a big exit. And then when we looked at the top 10 programs, even between the, just the salary and then the signing bonus, he was already looking at $180,000 per year at some of the schools he was looking at. And no big secret that a lot of tech companies, those are not the only components of your compensation. He might also be getting stock compensation like RSUs. So he could easily reach more than $200,000 versus his $90,000 a year compensation. And these cases are the easy ones. That's a slam dunk. He's going to make a lot of money by doing the MBA. Sticking to just that calculation is where people make a big mistake. That even if the MBA is not going to be a big step up for you right away, even if the MBA may be a small step down for you in the first job out, there can be many reasons that the MBA will make you money over the rest of your career. And we work routinely with people who have pre-MBA compensation up to around $350,000. And on the outliers, yeah, there's a little tail up to about four fifty, dollars And the highest that I can remember, we worked with someone who was making $650,000 a year before the MBA. But he was successful in sales and trading in the finance industry. Very successful, you might say. But he knew that in order to move from sales and trading into portfolio management and to be able to raise his own fund in the future, he needed the credential of a top MBA, period. The limited partners who would contribute the funds simply would not back someone without that kind of education. And the compensation ceiling for a successful portfolio manager at a hedge fund, much higher again than the $650,000. So don't make a kind of mechanical assumption that just because you don't see a big step up on the first job, you won't get financial value. So if we look at some of the ways, one of the ways you can get value out of the MBA 
is that it's a great chance to find the right career path for you. It was my MBA that allowed me to shift those pieces around as opposed to, I think, someone who doesn't have an MBA and selects you know, a single path. I'm going to be very senior at an investment bank if for any reason they're subject to some of the same needing to shift around, they don't have the tools or the network in place to be anything different than that exact path they've laid out for themselves early on. I do believe that if you pick a job that you are good at, you are more likely to enjoy your work, to put in the time to become excellent at your work, be promoted, and have a financially successful career. And when's the next time that you will have the chance to be surrounded by hundreds of friendly people from every kind of branch of industry that are happy to tell you all about their career? It's where I'm going into a client meeting in an industry that I've never touched before. I pick up the phone and I call a section mate. And I say, I know nothing about healthcare devices, Joe. Can you explain everything to me about them in this 30 minute call? And I have section mates who will take that call in a second and tell me everything I need to know. And they're happy to do that. Um, and then the last piece is just the, the reality is when you look at the world of how business is developing today, if you go to a top business school, there's someone from that school positioned to help you in almost every industry or vertical. The MBA genuinely will build useful skills for you. So I, I downplay the value of some of the hard curriculum in the MBA. You want to know accounting, you want to know finance, you want to know the basics of operations and marketing. I'll save you a lot of money. You can go to Barnes and Noble, you can go to Amazon, you can buy a book and read it at home. It is just not that complicated. Or even take a course at HBS online. But where the MBA is excellent is for the soft skill development. Some of the things where you might do mock negotiations with your classmates, group projects where a team of you pretends to be the management team of a company. These are going to be a low risk way to develop some of these skills. You might not want to try that new negotiation approach with a real client or with your boss, whereas you may feel, feel very safe to do it in the kind of MBA environment. And getting these skills right Getting these skills right before you are in your next job can have a huge value. HBS teaches you to read a case and be able to comment intelligently on it within, I don't know, I probably read some of my cases in 10 minutes when I, wasn't, when I was moving quickly, you know? And then I went to class and I had to comment intelligently. That's what I need to do in every meeting every day. So I think that part of the reason I haven't felt that is because I had that confidence. building your network. So this can come in handy for all kinds of different reasons. You know, first of all, having a big network reduces your career risk because it's likely that you will come to a time where you need to find a new job and it's not for any action that you took or failed to take. So for example, you know, in my own career, I joined the company Yahoo at a very interesting time. On my first day showing up to the office, the first email in my inbox that morning was a very short email. It was from the CEO, Carol Bartz, and it said, well, it was sent to the all at yahoo.com. Hi, guys. I've just been fired by telephone by the board of directors. Best of luck to you all, Carol. Sent from my iPad and... The company descended into utter chaos from that point. So it went through, by the time we got to Marissa Meyer as the full-time CEO, we'd gone through five different CEOs. My boss was laid off. His boss, the guy in charge of America's sales, was laid off. His boss, the guy in charge of North and South American sales, was laid off. The CFO, who was the interim CEO, was laid off. Absolutely everyone between me and the board of directors was gone, blown away. No one above me knew who I was. And it was just a terrible mess. It was a hard place to make any kind of career progress. And how did I get out of it? Well, 
you know, one of my one of my former clients called me and offered me a great job as SVP at a publicly traded travel company running one of their business units. And I was pretty happy that I had a good relationship with that guy. And business school is a great way to increase your odds that when you need that kind of a lifeline, someone in your network is going to be there for you. Not only should you go get an MBA, but you should use your MBA network and maintain it um, as much as possible. So I didn't mean to be an entrepreneur, as I mentioned. The reason I'm able to be an entrepreneur is two reasons. A, I have an MBA. I can walk into any room and talk to the head of any, any company about anything. I, I have a context for the financial markets in virtually any industry, or I know how to read a few things in order to go into that conversation and feel informed. The other reason I was able to fairly successfully launch a company in a short amount of time was the HBS network. I'm someone, I'm fairly social. Um, I definitely built an active network at HBS and I pretty intuitively maintained that network. So what that meant is that when I went to build a small business, I wasn't building a network to grow my business, I was turning on a network I already had. And it happened to be a network of people who were seven to 10 years out of business school and already in high, and therefore going into hiring roles and or starting their own companies, which if you're in my business is a great network to have. On the little bit happier side, even suppose your job is going really well. Having a broad network from the MBA, if you're a consultant, it can help you to sell deals to other companies. You may be selling to some of your classmates or alumni from your school. Everyone says as a consultant, they're able to be a consultant because they work primarily with, or their referral network begins primarily with their HBS classmates. So they say, you know, I was the head of strategy at a very prominent um, CPG company, and that was not working. Once I had young children, I, my classmates already thought of me as a CPG expert. A lot of them are private equity investors. They used me to evaluate their, their CPG investments. It's a great example of you know someone who was able to do that because of this the skill set and the network that came from her MBA. If you're a private equity investor, you may be sourcing deal flow from your network. You may be hiring executives for your portfolio companies from that network. There are just all kinds of ways that the people in the network can make you more successful in your job. You know, last of all, I will say the MBA is not a magic pill that can do absolutely anything for you. So. For example, if you've never had any experience as a private equity investor, it's extremely unlikely that you're going to just take the MBA and jump into a great role at Blackstone or Carlisle as an investor. It simply doesn't happen because there are people getting that great MBA who also had amazing investing experience that are going to get that job ahead of you. But the MBA can be a massive financial value to you through helping you be successful in your job, helping you find the right job, helping find new jobs, and just the value of the network in executing your job.